Welcome to this NASA 32 quick tip. In this video we're going to take a very quick look at an alternative firmware that you can put on the Minim OSD board to give you a heads up display or on screen display as part of your FPV experience. We've already done a video that looked at this in some detail, nearly 26 minutes long. It's called NASA 32 Flight Controller hyphen adding an OSD using Minim OSD. It was the third in the NASA 32 series on the channel. If you're not sure, I've put a link to the playlist underneath the, um, this video so you can find it. In that video, we went through everything from taking a brand new board, configuring it, flashing it, getting it all working, and then installing and configuring it on your NASA 32. This video, we're not going to go in anywhere near that level of detail because if you want to know how all the cabling and everything works, that video already exists. In this video, I'm just going to show you the differences and give you an idea of an alternative firmware that you can try. The two firmwares that we've already looked at were Rush-OSD-Development. This is the one we used in that previous video. We downloaded version 2.3 and put it on the Minim OSD and it worked fine. The one I want to show you today is called Multiweet-OSD. Now this is one that I've used quite a bit with my um, Multiweet style boards. The great thing, because NASA32 and Multiweet are such close cousins under the skin, then we can actually use this exact same code to give us a different on-screen display. I personally like this one. I think it's a little bit cleaner, it's a little bit neater. The graphical user interface for how you actually get everything working on this is, um, I think, a lot more sophisticated than the one we've already used. So to get this code, you need to click on Downloads. They'll give you the list of all the versions. You need to download the latest. I've already done that. I've unpacked it into the um, folder on the desktop. If I open this up, very similar to the other firmware, there are two directories. There's one that actually has the firmware that we're going to put on to the board, and the second one has the graphical user interface, and there are versions for Linux, Mac, and Windows 32, to actually then configure the on-screen display that you want. And this is the part I think that's particularly good in this version of the firmware. Now to install this, we're going to need an FTDI cable. We're going to have to plug the FTDI cable into the end of the Minim OSD. Make sure as before that you have all of the soldering points bridged so that both of the 5 volt sides of the board are working fine and then once you've plugged them all in, plug it into the computer and then we should be able to flash the software. So I'm going to plug mine in now and what we'll do is we'll start the Arduino program to actually upload the firmware. So the first thing we need to do is obviously upload the firmware to the board. So we're going to go into File, Open, go on to the desktop, go into the Multiweet OSD 1.2 directory, into the Multiweet OSD directory, and in there is a file that has the same name as the directory it's in, mw underscore osd.ino. We'll double click on that and there is the firmware ready to go. Now for the NASA32 there's a couple of things that we need to change. All the configurable parameters and I'm not going to go through all of these in here, there are an awful lot but there's a couple that we need to just change to make sure it is going to work okay. First one is down here. We need to define the controller settings. Uh, if you define base flight, because clean flight and base flight are essentially uh, roots of the same code, then if you define base flight, it means that the correct heading will be displayed. You can also change it here for the different multi Wii versions as well. And there's other bits and pieces down here that you can change too. I didn't change an awful lot really. Um, so all I did was just make sure that we had define base flight was selected so that it was going to work. Once that was done, go into tools make sure that the serial port is the right one that you've got the FTDI adapter plugged into make sure the board type is selected for Arduino Pro or Pro Mini 5 volt 16 megahertz with 18 mega 328 once that's done hit upload and let it finish its job take about two or three minutes to watch the whole process you can watch the original Minim OSD video 
Once we have done that, then I would unplug the board and replug it back in just to give it a nice hard start. And then what we need to do is we need to have a look at the graphical user interface to configure the board. So to start the GUI, we will go back into this directory structure. There is a nice version for Linux, Mac OS as well, but we're Windows 32 and we'll start the graphical user interface. Okay, and here it is ready to go. And again, we just can open the COM port by clicking on the COM port that the FTDI connector is appearing as, and everything will go nice and green, showing us that we have a connection to the board, and there's everything set up. Now this is how mine is configured over here on the right hand side. I'll show you how this looks in real life in a second. The really nice thing about this version of the firmware is this interface and how you set it up is much more sophisticated than the one we did in the initial demonstration. Before I take you through this, let me show you one of the key things you need to do. Because the firmware has been updated to the board, but the font hasn't been updated and uploaded, if you don't do this next step, then what might happen is when you run the board, it'll start and you'll see the video um, display of you know the field or wherever you're in, but you won't get the overlaid graphics. So what you need to do is go into font tools before you do anything else, click on browse, click the default fonts and say open. It'll say it's done it, It'll take a second to open them up. Once it's done that, then you can click on edit font and have a look at them if you really want to. If you really, really felt like it, you could actually change the fonts yourself by um, clicking on the bits and pieces, but we're not going to do that. Next thing you do, I'm not going to do it here because I've already done it on this board, is then you click upload and it'll start counting up to 256, which is the entire character set. You'll need to absolutely do that. Once that is running, then you can spend time looking through this and deciding how you want everything displayed. Nice thing is that each of these is very cleanly identified in its own particular box. Um, you can decide whether you want things turned on or not. So here is the main voltage display here on the left hand side. If I want to turn it off, I just flick that switch across and it disappears. I always want the voltage on, of course. As per the other video that we had a look at, you can either use the multi Wii or the NAS A32 in this case to provide the information of the telemetry port. If you have the main voltage sensor plugged in, that's absolutely what you can use. Or if you want some of these others, you can use um, ADCs by not using the multi Wii and using the dividers on the board itself. Uh, there are specialized boards now for the minimum OSD that have connections on the side for things like the main battery voltages, current RSSI and video amps too. If you're using those hardwired ports on the side, you want to not use multi-way. And then we have things like um, the amperage, the RSSI, the other things like Imperial, PAL, um, it, because it's imperial, it'll give me miles per hour, which I get more used to here. Normally, if I haven't got GPS on, I tend to like metric because meters and hundreds of meters make sense in my head. If I'm going to be using things like um, speed with the GPS, then I always tend to have imperial. We can do things like display the throttle position, um, battery status, and everything else. Um, I like to display the flight mode. So we are displaying the GPS data here. We can see that it's going to show the number of satellites in the top left hand corner. It'll also give us the miles per hour and the uh, distance and altitude from the GPS data as well. If I take GPS off, you'll see all that disappear. I find that really useful information. So if you've got a GPS on your board, I would turn that on. The only thing that I would recommend is that um, if you're going to put the GPS coordinates on, which is actually the latitude and longitude, you can turn them on. By default though, they appear in the middle of the screen above where it says disarmed at the moment. I find that's really off-putting, so I would always say that I would click coordinates at the top, and then they appear above the um, heading information. So let me just turn the coordinates off because I don't use those. And make sure that you save your settings once you've got everything you where you want so that it's stored on the board. So really nice interface here. So the last thing we need to do then is we need to wire this up to NAS A32 
pretty straightforward. Again, if you want to go through this in detail, it's available step by step in the other video that we mentioned at the start. In this one, I'll just throw up the couple of wiring diagrams. The first one is going to be the wiring diagram of how you connect it to the NAS A32. And pretty straightforward, you need plus 5 volts and ground, and you need to swap the receive and transmit cables going into the top of the NAS A32. And then finally, the second thing you have to do is then put the minimum OSD in between the camera and the transmitter itself. And as I mentioned in the first video, I never recommend putting any voltage into the output pins. It just makes your life more complicated. So the last thing then is to go onto the desk, have it all plugged in and show you this working on the screen. So here it is, all plugged in and working. We have my quad here that has the NAS A32 just off to the side. I've just plugged the um, Minim OSD down here, flashing away. You can see both the LEDs are on, which is good. Here's my video transmitter and the trusty FPV receiver here, so we can see it. And you can see that we actually have, uh, we're inside, we can see GPS 5. Uh, satellites, how long we've been flying, we can see the battery voltage, we can also see if I tr uh, move the craft around, we can see the artificial horizon changing as well, we can also see the distance to home and our uh, altitude or from the GPS data as well. So there it is, all working. Personally, this is my favourite firmware for the Minim OSD, a little bit more complicated to set up. Um, if anyone has any other nice firmwares that they like, please drop me a comment and let me know. I'm always interested in trying new stuff. Just to prove the video works. Let me take the dark bag off the camera. There we go. Um, so thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and happy flying.